All right. Hey. Hi, your own. This is Andrew. Hi, Andrew. How's it going? Doing well. Um, I have some psychological observations I wanted to run by you. So since you brought up um, the attitude towards businessmen and your frustration about objectivists kind of not being able to respect businessmen who don't have um, the same political uh, beliefs. Um, something that occurs to me is you and I have talked before about um, being de -re repression in, in emotions and the importance of being de repressed. And it occurs to me that, you know, there might be an issue going on with a lack of independence in self esteem. So self esteem is at its very base love for oneself. And I think the objectivist conception of that would be you earn that through efficacious action in reality. Um, but it would seem to me that if somebody is repressed, they're potentially missing, you know, both in positive and negative emotions, they're missing the ability to feel that love for themselves. And psychologically, self-esteem is, is the most important value, I would say. So there may be this seeking, kind of constant seeking for somebody else to complete that feeling. And something I've observed in people's attitude, some people's attitude towards Ayn Rand, and I've seen this, this routine go on where they adopt Ayn Rand as, you know, somebody that they respect. Um, they subscribe to objectivism. And then after a certain period of time, I think that they kind of adopt her in a way that's almost more of an idol rather than this is somebody I respect immensely. And I think that that introduces, again, somebody who has a dependent self-esteem, a kind of inferiority complex. Secondhand. They then, they then see something or observe something she said or did that they don't agree with. Now, they can agree with 99.9% .9 of what she uh, said or did, but that 0.1% just, they get obsessed with it. Yep. And it almost takes over their attitude towards objectivism and towards her, and eventually they turn against her. They want almost nothing to do with her. They want almost nothing to do with objectivism. And it occurs to me as the same process of what we might be observing as somebody who can see a business leader who they respect but who has this thing that they disagree with. And so they don't only feel like towards him, maybe they don't love him because he's not perfect to them, but they hate him. They actually hate him. It, it, it's this dichotomy between love and hate that may be introduced from this dependence in self-esteem. So I wanted to get your comment on if you think that that's valid and, and if you've observed some of the same things. Well, I definitely observed the same things and you see it all the time. And I mean, I think it's connected. It's all connected to oppression in the sense that I think a lot of objectivists, I mean, think about how, think about how um, difficult in a sense objectivism is. I mean, in, in this sense, right? We read Ayn Rand when we're 18. We have no experience of the world, right? Very little, very little as, as, as thinking, thinkers, as adults. We handed on a silver platter the truth, Right. Um, I mean, the answers. And it's it's mind boggling. How do you deal with that? Right. Because we don't have enough knowledge of reality to integrate that truth and make it ours in a first handed kind of way. So most objectivists go through a long phase of rationalism where they understand the philosophy abstractly. They understand all the connections between the things, maybe. Right. Certain aspects of it they own because they are living it and they, they relate to it. But vast parts of it, they have no idea what's going on there because they can't relate it to concretes in reality because they haven't experienced those concretes in reality. And if, as you've observed in the, in the past when we've talked, they're also psychologically repressed, then they can't connect to certain parts of it because they don't, emotionally, they can't go there and they don't allow themselves to go there and they don't experience the emotions. So the philosophy stays for them as a floating abstraction, or at least chunks of the philosophy do. And then usually their point of disagreement comes in one of those chunks that is floating, a floating abstraction now. And they can't integrate it, and they can't make any sense of it, and they obsess about it, and then they blow up. 
And, you know, what I've seen, particularly with Trump, of all, and, and it's the same people who obsess about Trump. The, I mean, I'm not talking about people who voted for Trump and think he's okay. I'm talking about people who everything he does is magnificent, right? Is excellent. Um, you know, and everything, every criticism is left-wing propaganda, fake news, stuff like that. I mean, I have them on my Facebook page every single day. I mean, there are thousands of them. It's unbelievable. And many of them called themselves objectivists once and maybe still do, which is spooky. But again, it's there, it's, it's, it's at some point, what they really integrated is politics. They, they kind of got politics, they got engaged in the politics. Maybe they came from a conservative background and they always kind of had a lean towards the objectivist politics, but they got politics. They never fully integrated reason, purpose, self-esteem. They never fully integrated life. They never fully integrated values, hierarchy of values. The importance of living. I see this in people, and I'm not talking about people who professionally do this, but people who as a hobby obsess about the threat of Islam or obsess about the threat, the, the latest conspiracy theories about the left or obsess about something. And it's always political and it trumps their entire life. And the happiness doesn't matter anymore because the Muslims are coming and, 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 and we, knew, you know, we need to build our bunker, right? Or whatever. And it, it, so, you know, maybe they've got a job. Some of them, I'm not sure. But maybe they've got a job and maybe they do okay with their job. But they're not, they, they don't have a career in the full sense of it. They don't have a love life in the full sense of it or romantic life in the full sense of it. They don't live fully. They obsess about these things. And the objectivism, when it comes to morality, epistemology is a complete floating abstraction. All they ever integrated was politics. And the same thing here with the businessmen. Instead of seeing their productive genius, instead of seeing the beauty and the benefit you get from it, as an egoist, the benefit I get from my iPhone or from Amazon. Oh, Jeff Bezos. I forgot Jeff Bezos. I'm a huge Jeff Bezos fan. Um, it, it, look at what Amazon has done to their own life. Or look at what Zoom, we're using Zoom right now, what it has done to their lives. And I admire and say thank you. Want to say thank you to the people. They go look and check their voting record. As if that's relevant to the experience of, wow, I can use Zoom to do all these amazing things. I mean, my mind never goes to politics. Unless it's in politics. I mean, and from that, it never goes to politics. I never think about, I wonder what the politics of the entrepreneur is. It, it just, it, 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 I mean, that's down the road, maybe, right? Right now, I'm enjoying this. This is a benefit to me. And I'm an egoist. So if I'm enjoying it, I want to relish in the enjoyment of the thing. Not in some... Thing irrelevant. So it's, uh, <laughs> I just saw a comment Jonathan wrote on uh, YouTube. I wish Iran had better critics. Yeah, me too. <laughs> you can think of a few um, <laughs> who I wish I didn't, who I wish were better. Um, so it's, it really is this lack of integration. And, and I think you're absolutely right about self esteem. So all of this comes down to, if you're an objectivist and the philosophy is a floating abstraction and you obsess about certain things, you never actually gain the benefits of the philosophy. And the benefit of the philosophy is self-esteem and happiness. That's the, that's the, that's the, um, the payoff. That's what it's about. Because you never actually work to integrate it. You never actually have it integrated, available to you on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. You're not living it in a moment-to-moment -moment basis. It's something that occurs to you when you do politics. But in life, most of the time, you're afraid. And this is what motivates a lot of this interest in politics. It's fear. It's motivated by fear. I've noticed this. And people obsess about politics, they're afraid. They're constantly afraid that the world's going to come to an end, that the left is going to come, the Muslims are coming, somebody's going to, the environmentalists are going to kill. Somebody, now, there's reason to be worried. But this obsession and fear, you got to live. And, and, and they forget to live. So they never get that opportunity to integrate the self-esteem. Now, it's a spiral. Everything in, objective, everything in life is kind of the spiral. Leonard Peikoff talks about the spiral of knowledge, right? Uh, and it reinforces. So you don't have self-esteem. So, so it, that affects your emotional life. The fact that you have a weak emotional life makes you obsess about certain things and be more afraid, which reduces your ability to have self-esteem. And it just reinforces each other constantly. And a lot of it is connected to the fact that they can't go to morality in a personal way because they're oppressed. Because to go to deal with morality 
on a personal level, which is the only way really to deal with morality, means to be exposed, to expose yourself. What are my true motivations? Because look, we all have altruism embedded in there. And we all have to root it out. And it's not easy to root it out. We all have all kinds of crap that our parents taught us that we, we, we came to conclusions when we were kids about that our, you know, Avi and I, that our nation taught us when we were growing up in Israel. We, we have crap inside there and you have to root it out. And that requires the opposite of repression. That requires actually to be connected to your emotions and knowing why you feel what you feel and then finding the source of it and rooting it out. And if you're repressed, you can't do that. And therefore you're stuck. And I think that's where people, again, that was a long answer, but that's, that's where people are. So I think, I think these psychological issues are really, really, really crucial. That makes sense. Yeah, the Trump, What's absolutely. That? And the Trump, uh, absolutely. And the Trump point, I mean, that is so, it, that is such an expression of this in that, like they're looking for Trump to complete. They, they love Trump. I mean, I would literally put it that way. They, they, they love Trump. And it's like if you say something negative, you're attacking someone they love. This is totally a, a lack of self-esteem. They are looking for a Superman to solve their problems. And in this case, it, their political problems and Trump is their Superman. And he, he, he is the guy who's going to solve all the problems for them. And because, because you know what the great virtue Trump has for them? is that he seems to stand up to the bad guys, wh whoever the bad guys are, right? You, you, you stay, and when you show them that he doesn't really, they whitewash it because they need a hero. They can't live without a hero. They need to believe somebody is fighting their fight for them uh, because, because their life depends on it, because their self-esteem depends on it. Yeah, absolutely. Jonathan, you want to say something? Well, just quickly, Ron, I mean, you're getting your, back to your point about, well, for me at least, objectivism is not, about winning a political argument, but simply having a happier life, having a, living a better and fuller life, not ever, of course, with unhappy moments or challenges, but uh, living just uh, feeling more alive and, and not you know, winning a, a, a political skirmish on Facebook or anywhere else. Yeah, and, and feeling alive, which means, you know, and, and, and using objectivism to solve problems and deal with reality and deal with people and deal with yourself and, and deal with stuff and, and and all of that reinforces it, attain your values and through attaining your values, achieve happiness. That's what it really is all about. Yeah. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the role of the collectivist brute. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time. So. I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourronbrookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, your own book show, and, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...